Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Doc and Padama and this time I am going to present to you the research paradigm, the statement of the problem and the hypothesis for an experimental research. So if you are writing your study or your research paper and you are using or utilizing the research design, uh, experimental research or quasi-experimental research, this particular parts of your research would be able to help you in formulating the following parts, specifically the research paradigm, the statement of the problem, and the hypothesis. So I hope you join me in this particular discussion of this uh, part of your research and I'll explain to you how these uh, parts are relevant to one another. So before we continue, please subscribe to my YouTube channel at Toket Padama. Click that notification bell to alert you when a new video has been uploaded. So to continue, as you can see in your screen, I already have a template for the research paradigm for an experimental research. So what are these particular uh, parts, elements, and how are they related to the SOP? So I'm going to explain and label the parts. You can also put this in your actual manuscript. So the first one under the statement of the problem is the comparability test. So we conduct comparability in order to make sure that the, the ability in terms of the domain that you're going to use, in this case, the grade average of students, because as a teacher, uh, specifically, if I would like to test a teaching strategy, I would like to use this on two groups, specifically two classes that has the same level of uh, grade average. So it is important it is imperative that you set this particular criteria before you start your experimental research. So we call these groups controlled group and the experimental group. So again, the first one in our SOP is the comparability test. So if we're going to mark and label this, this would reflect under SOP1 and this is what we call comparability. Okay, I'll just uh, uh, abbreviate the term. So this refers to comparability. Or let us make this smaller so we can actually put the term so that we will be guided properly during our discussion. This, this is going to be comparability under SOP number one. Okay, so we have already established comparability in our paradigm and that is also what is reflected in our SOP or statement of the problem. The next one is we compare the pretest performance of the two groups, meaning the controlled group and the experimental group. So this will fall under this particular SOP. So we're going to label this as this one is SOP2 and this is also SOP2. Okay, and then later on, so again, let's read the second uh, statement of the problem. What is the pretest performance of the two groups? So we're referring to the controlled group under that one. So that's the pretest and the experimental group. So again, these two are uh, reflected under the SOP and then under SOP3, the significant difference between the pretest performances of the two groups. Now we are going to compare is there significant difference between the pretest of the controlled group and the pretest of the experimental group. So this is what we now call uh, this will now be our SOP number three, and this will now be labeled as the significant difference. significant difference between the pretest of the two groups. Again, to those who are listening right now in our discussion, all of these are already template prepared for you. What we are doing right now is 
presenting to you the relevance of the, the paradigm to the SOP so that you would be able to follow and discuss this with your uh, panelists during your defense. So the flow of the the flow of the research paradigm would go or would uh, start from the control group going down to the pretest and on the other side also will be the experimental group going to their pretest uh, uh, instrument and then the comparability will go two way the same with the significant difference so these are the arrowheads that you're going to use for this particular uh, diagram okay the next one under sop number four so if you're going to look at sop number four what is the post test performance of the two groups so referring to post test these are the post test you're going to present the result of the post test and then after that immediately you're going to compare if there is significant difference between the post test of the controlled group and the experimental group okay so again i am uh, going to present to you the flow of the diagram continuing again from the pretest you go down and then uh, under the control group as you can see here under the control group after the pretest the non-strategy group or the control group will use the non-strategy meaning the conventional method of teaching without the use of the strategy being introduced in your particular research. So after conducting the lesson without the use of the strategy, this is now the time wherein the post-test will be administered. So again, going down here, the same with the other side. From the experimental group after the pretest, they're going to conduct class using the strategy introduced in this particular class. So later on, they're going to compare who was able to learn more. So again, this will fall under another element in our research uh, paradigm. Okay, so after implementing the strategy during the lesson, it will now conduct a post-test. To evaluate the learning of the class so after this you, your arrowhead will go down to the post test and then as you can see after identifying the result of the post test for both group uh, the controlled group and the experimental group you all you are now going to identify if there is significant difference between the post test of the two groups and then the next one under SOP number seven, what are the lear learning gains of the two groups individually or separately? What is the learning gain of the control group? So this is uh, SOP number, number seven. Why SOP number seven? So uh, we have not identified SOP number six yet. So SOP number six, what is the significant difference between the pretest and the post-test? So after identifying SOP number 5, significant difference of the post-test of the two groups, SOP number 6, you identify the significant difference between the pretest and post-test of the two groups. So where will you find that significant difference of the pretest and post-test? So I'm going to mark it here. This is the pretest and post-test of the control group and then the pretest and the post-test of the experimental group. So this is already a significant difference of the pretest and post-test. So again, this is the significant difference of pretest and post-test for the experimental and the other one is for the control group. So this both of this will fall under SOP number six. So this is SOP number six. Okay. Now, after this, so after identifying SOP number six, at the bottom, again, referring to our guide to the, to the SOP, SOP number seven, what are the learning gains of the two groups? So this is where we put uh, SOP number seven and label SOP number seven here. So these are the learning gains, what the class learned from their respective uh, classes. So again, the learning gain for the control group should be identified. The learning gain for the 
experimental group should also be individually identified. So we mark it as uh, 7, referring to SOP number 7. Okay, next, SOP number 8. What is the significant difference between the learning gains of the two groups? So it's the same. After identifying the learning gains of the two groups, you now identify the significant difference between the uh, control group and the experimental group. The significant difference between the learning gains of the two groups. So we mark this as SOP number 8, significant difference again. Okay, so I think we have already covered all of the SOP except for the remaining arrowheads. Okay, so this is where we complete the, the paradigm referring to or reflecting what is already presented in the statement of the problem. So this is already a representation of the paradigm. So. Uh, this is what we meant by the re relevance and relationship of the paradigm to the SOP. The SOP should directly present through diagram form the content and the flow of the statement of the problem, especially if you are conducting an experimental group, specifically quasi-experimental group. So uh, the next part would be the formulation of the hypothesis again these are a pre-made templated form of uh, sop uh, research paradigm and hypothesis so uh, i'm going to go through the different hypothesis that you can use for this particular uh, for this particular type of research so i'm just going to uh, adjust the sop upward so we can compare them together with the statement of the problem. So again, the, the hypothesis should also be directly related or relevant. These hypotheses should be directly relevant to the SOP that you have formulated. So based on the following hypothesis, if you, you observe, these hypotheses uh, are uh, how many do we have? Uh, I think this is only four. So, number one should not be included there. I'll just adjust this. Okay. So, since that is just part of the introduction. This one. Okay. So, it is just uh, saying that the hypothesis should be based on the SOP using standard deviation. So, let's take that out. Okay. So, there. So, here. And let's just adjust the numbers. So, under here, we have supposed to be SOP. This is supposed to be number one. And then we have the second uh, hypothesis, rather. This is hypothesis two. And this is hypothesis three. Okay, and this is hypothesis four. So, we have four of these hypotheses for this particular experimental research. And then, let's just move this down so that we can compare this with the SOP that we have already formulated. So the hypothesis is based on the SOP specifically uh, referring to the uh, uh, using standard deviation. <coughs> okay, number one. So in this particular hypothesis, hypotheses are formed in the uh, null uh, format. So null format, I have already explained this because uh, most researchers expect a positive or affirmative result in their research. That, that is why we formulate usually the null hypothesis specifically in our institution to counteract the expected output of your research, which is in affirmative. So if you form your hypothesis in both uh, affirmative and negative or null, the, the affirmative side would, would already agree with what is expected in the research. That is why in our particular institution, we formulate it in the null format. Okay, so now going to the hypothesis, uh, there is no significant difference since it is in the null form. There is no significant difference between the pretest and the post-test of the two groups. So since we compared this one, significant difference 
the pretest uh, we are referring to this one SOP number 3 there is no significant difference between the pretest this is the pretest of the two groups so we've already address that first one and then that's the next one there is no significant difference between the post test these are the post test and we uh, refer to the significant difference we would like to know if there's significant difference in the post test of the two groups so that is also addressed in the second hypothesis the third hypothesis there is no significant difference between the pretest and post test of the two groups so this is the pretest and post test under sop6 pre-test and post-test under the SOP6. So we again have addressed that particular part. And then I think there's another one here. There is no significant difference between the learning gains of the two groups. These are the learning gains of the two groups and we were looking for the significant differences. So again, we have addressed all of this in our hypothesis and we have checked that all of this are reflected in our research paradigm. So again, this uh, parts of your experimental research specifically the paradigm the sop and the hypothesis can already be used in your respective experimental research design study so all you need to do is just to properly label the elements uh, and then uh, try to make it uh, uh, relevant to what you are conducting and this will already be enough to substantiate the requirements for these particular parts of your research so that's it everyone so i hope you were able to uh, you will be able to use all of this in your research so i'm going to zoom in on the individual parts so you can screenshot and then these are the statement of the problem and the hypothesis for your experiment or experimental research so again everyone thank you very much please subscribe to my youtube channel at talk at padama and click the notification bell to alert you when a new video has been uploaded again on the side of your screen you're going to see um, prefer uh, refer videos that would help you suggested videos that would help you in writing your other parts of your research from chapters 1 to chapter 5 and on the other side will be my uh, icon with my photo if you click that it will direct you to uh, the subscription of my youtube channel so thank you very much everyone stay safe and god bless see you on our next video bye